We're just about there. It's counting down. It's like at least live streaming in like 10 seconds here. So. Dun, 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 dun. And while that's doing on, see if there's anyone else that wants to come in and say hi. Yes. All right. Hi, everybody. Oh, one second here. So you're also on YouTube. Yeah, I am on YouTube. That's, that's, okay. part, of, that's part of the uh, deal here. I'm watching I'm myself on YouTube because I, I don't I don't need to hear myself talk. I, I, I hear myself talk plenty enough as is. So are you guys ready? Let's do this. Welcome, everyone, to Podcasting A to Z. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff and podcasts, too. Today, we're going to be talking about podcasting. Also, we're going to be talking about streaming. Just out of the nature of 2020 being 2020, uh, this technology, it's Zoom, and a few other programs are a lot more prevalent in podcasting. We will get to those eventually. But first, I'm just going to go to very basics here, which is... So you're also on what, YouTube. I am on YouTube. That's part of the deal here. Someone can hear. Someone can hear me on my on YouTube because I, I don't I don't need to hear myself talking here. I, I hear myself talking plenty enough as is. So, are you guys ready? Let's do this. Well, someone, here, someone can hear me on YouTube. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm your host that's Joshua right. Floresco. I write stuff and podcasts too. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about podcasting. Uh, we're going to be talking about on here. Just out of the nature of 2020 being 2020, uh, this technology is I, I'm, I'm not recording here. Sorry, this is my fault. No, it's gone now. Okay, weird. Um, so anyway, we're going to start. Like this. A podcast can be literally about anything and everybody. Um, it can be like a cooking show. It can be a, it can be a, you know, a story about like a story like an online like reading of your novel it can be an interview show like i do it can be pretty much anything you imagine it to be and that's what makes podcasting such a unique medium is because the only real limitation is your imagination and your um and your ability to project produce it into a live audience you don't need much to get started um but to get started i would recommend that you work on what i call a formula and one of the most basic, simplest things you do with, with a podcast is the first question I asked when I did this show was how long did I want it to be? Because podcasting can be any length you want. I have seen, I've seen amazing 10, I've seen amazing 10 second, pod, not 10 second, 10 minute podcast. 10 second would be awesome, but no, 10 minute podcast. I've seen amazing, I've seen amazing, um, only real limitation. I, I've seen amazing, like, three-hour podcasts. And your ability to Where is that coming from? Don't need much to get started. Um, but... Oh, is it on here, too? Okay, I found... Okay, I found my problem. All right. You stream on YouTube and go like this. Go like this. And go like that. And done. Okay, so... The, the long and short of it is... Holy crap. Um... Your podcast can literally be anything you want it to be, but the very first thing you have to figure out is its structure. How do you want to make it work? And the way you do that is, and time is a great way of doing that because with, with time, you're setting yourself a constriction. And constrictions are where creativity is basically founded. I decided with my show that it would be somewhere between a half hour and an hour, which makes it a workout podcast, right? If someone that's going to listen, Someone that's going to listen to this podcast is going to, is going to work out. It's going to be like one winding from the day. It's going to be going going on a long, a somewhat long trip. Not a long, long trip, but but you know a decent trip. A fifteen minute podcast, for example, may be focusing on someone taking the train to work. Because that one going taking the train to work, say in Europe, that's a pretty big listening market. So when you figure out time, time is the time is the um, time is element. It's the biggest element for when you do. A podcast. Now, once you figure that out, okay, now you can figure out what kind of show you want to do. And it can be anything you want it to be. It can be a sports show. It can be a like writing show. Now, I'm assuming here most of the people here write for a living. So you guys probably want to know how do you actually use your podcasting for writing. So that's where I'm going to focus on. If anybody's got any questions, feel free to chat me up, right? Um, feel free to chat me up and feel free to let me know. Um, if there's anything you want, you want to get to. So 
there's a couple of ways. I've seen some great podcasts where they do like audio stories. Uh, and they're amazing. Like, I, I'm a big fan of like the old school radio shows like The Shadow or Sound Effects and all that stuff just tells a great story. I love that stuff very much. Um, a very good example of this was Sage and Savant. They did a really good job of that. But their podcast was amazing. I thought they did a fantastic job. Or you can do what I've been doing, which is which I've used as a networking tool, is I've interviewed creators. I decided I decided for me specifically that I wanted to be a casual conversation with creative people about life, the universe, and everything. My topics have ranged from everything from glitter to Black Lives Matter and like literally everything in between you can possibly imagine. I just had a conversation with Christina Z about how hockey and fetish are actually they're exact they're on kind of the same plank. It's actually a hilarious conversation I had on my podcast and again I made a conscious choice that made some very conscious choices with my show I didn't want a show where I just talked about books although I could talk about books I wanted to make sure where I get the sense know of what the creator wants and you have to have an idea and you have to find my biggest piece of advice is with when you get started with this is you have to find something you're incredibly passionate about talking about whether it's your books, whether it's something you really care about, like whether it can be political, it can be, it doesn't matter, but it's something you're going to be really, 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 uh, you can come up every week and go, okay, I got something I got to say and it's important and I care and I care about it because it's going to translate on your show, no matter who you are, what you are, how you do it. And uh, those are the big fundamental blocks, I think. The time, the time you want to spend, who who, what you want to talk about and what you feel comfortable talking about for weeks on end. You must be consistent with your shows. I have somehow gone to three a week. I'm, I'm not sure how I went to three a week, but I've gone to three a week. Um, my show has actually got two formulas to it now. During the week, I do interviews. Uh, I'll have guests come on. We'll talk about life, the universe, and everything. During the weekend, I will read from my novel, and then I will actually invite uh, an author – a musician, a poet to come and read their stuff on there as well. And that's my weekend edition. It's kind of me doing a story time. And that came about in part because of what's happening now. I was thinking when this started, see, I, I was a little different than most people. I went straight to acceptance. Screw it. Let's figure out, let's figure out where we go from here. I'm not even going to, I'm not traumatized. I've already seen death in the face. You get, there's nothing scary about this to me. Let's just figure out, A, where do I go from here? And B, how can I make money doing it? And that's honestly, that may be a crazy mentality, but that was my mentality. And what I was thinking about when I did the second part of the show was C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, during World War II, when London was actually being bombed, was reading from what would become near Christianity. And I thought that was actually an incredibly powerful thing. And I thought, you know, it'd be really cool is that, well, I don't, I read my story. Because when you sit there and think about it, art is ultimately the expression of hope. That's what art is. And I thought that would be a very powerful thing to do each and every weekend. Uh, unbeknownst to me, some of those episodes are some of my most popular episodes. I've had Crystal Wallace, who by the way, really killed it on the show. I have had Fonda Lee come on the show and actually read from it. I've had Kate Salitis. I've had, I assume I have Robert J. Sawyer coming on the podcast to read. I'm ha I, I've gotten some big names. I've had some people just getting started. I've had people do their first ever readings. I've done live albums. I've done video record, and it is so freaking cool. And if you can hear the passion in my voice, you could, that that's because this is stuff I'm generally excited about. I'm a fan. As much as I'm an author, I'm also a fan. So when you listen to me talk to everybody I talk to, I'm a fan of them as people. I may not agree with them on everything, but that's not really the point. I'm more interested in who you are as a person because your story is interesting to me. And that's why 407 episodes later, I'm still rolling with the podcast. Because I, I, I mean, I've made money with the podcast, but I certainly didn't make money for a long time at it. And I had to have passion for it to do it. But I've also been consistent. I started off at one a week, then I went to two a week, then I went to three a week. And then one week this year, I actually went to four. I went and I, I, that was that was crazy. I'll never do that again. I say that now kind of like this, kind of like this. But anyways, um you have to be consistent with your show and it can, and that's really, really important because when people start subscribing to your show and they will, um, I'll show you guys about your RSS feed in just a second here. When people start subscribing to your show, they will, hold on a second. I'm just seeing, I just want to see what time I'm at here. Oh, I got lots. 
All right. So when it comes to your show, they're going to they're gonna come to expect you to show up and put out content on a regular basis. Those are your subscribers. And if you don't, you can take breaks. I, I will manage this. Like if you built in, like I've seen movie, like TV, television watches where they will literally do like watching Buffy for a whole season. And then after the season's done, they take a break for a few months. You can do that. But be very honest with your audience about what you're doing there. Don't surprise them. If you surprise them, you will lose them, right? Have a clear plan about if you're going to take breaks, inform your audience, be honest with your audience. I think actually more than anything else to get a podcast to grow, um, if you get a podcast to grow, you have to make sure that your audience is there. And that your audience is, is and to do that is to make sure that you are being honest with them. If you're not, you will lose them. The other thing you gotta always remember too, lots of people, lots of people are coming in, lots of people are putting out podcasts themselves. If you stop and you forget or you become erratic, sooner or later people will forget you. And when that happens, you're done. Right? Or at least you're done as trying to go for like a profession or do any kind of um any kind of long longevity. By the way, there's nothing wrong with doing this as a hobby either. Like there's nothing wrong with just going out there and just saying, hey ho, I'm just doing this for fun. That's cool, enjoy the ride. But if you wanna do this consistently, you wanna build an audience with this, day, like you have to have a plan day in and day out. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I am there. You can go listen to it, right? Um, cool. Um, but the thing about it is you have to, you have to make a clear and, and I'm sorry, I'm so distracted, everybody just hosting and, and, and talking it, it, I'm, I'm very, I'm working on it. I'm trying, I'm trying, stop laughing, but that's, I'm trying. Um, but, um, but the thing about it is right. You have to, you have to be, um, you gotta have a consistent plan. You gotta follow your formula consistently. It's not that different from books that way. Books have all books. If you really sit there, all books you write, there's a formula to them. There's a there is a method to your madness. And podcasting is no different, whether it's a cooking show or whether you're talking about why Buffy is awesome and made of cheese. It doesn't really matter. You must have a formula or it will not work. And figuring out your, there is a formula to my show. I open. I say, Hey, everybody, welcome to this episode of Just Joshing. I am your host, Josh and Pencil Resco. I write stuff in podcasts too. You'll hear that every episode. You hit, at the end of every episode, you'll hear Josh shush. In fact, I got the true story. I actually took it out for one episode. And I literally had a listener go to me, Why did you take that out? That's awesome. So, I, 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 I again, there is a, there's a formula to your podcast. Always keep that in mind at the end of every episode. You maintain that formula. That doesn't mean you can't shake it up. I've played a board game on my podcast. I've, I've, I've literally, I literally played Magic the Gathering on my podcast. That was funny, right? Just, just like you can, you can break the monotony of your show. I've done 400 episodes. I'm going to, I get bored sometimes with my format. I am going to change it every once in a while, just because I can. But I'm, all, I'm very aware of who my audience is. Although, ironically, ironically, you Canadians in, the, in here, I'm, I'm mad at you. I feature Canadians and more Americans listen to talk to me about you guys than you do. That's actually a sad thing. It's the truth. You guys doubt the work at supporting yourselves better. I'm going to actually be on you guys all weekend for that. So the truth of the matter is, right, um, know who your audience is. Don't betray your audience. You can change things up, but be consistent with your formula. Know your formula. Get your audience comfortable enough that they trust you when you decide to change things up. That's the, actually would need to be a good piece of advice. Now, so let's talk equipment. If you're doing this for fun, don't spend stupid amounts of money. I'm just straight up telling you right now, this is, I am just going to go on the weekend and I'm going to talk about my love of potatoes. I'm not sure why you would talk about your love of potatoes, but you might want to talk about your love of potatoes. Who am I to stop you going on a rant every Saturday at 2 p.m. on about potatoes? Here's the deal. If you're just doing it for fun, get a $30 microphone, get Audacity, or if you're on a Mac, get, just use the basic garage band. Don't invest your money unless you're serious. When you get more serious, you start looking at microphones, you start looking at speakers, you start looking at different things. Like for example, 
Um, you can look at like through my case, I still use Audacity primarily for my edit software purposes. So actually one of the better programs for your PC. Uh, if I had a Mac, it'd be Garage, GarageBand so superior in like almost every way. But that's okay. I digress on that. But the thing about it is there's a lot of good free, basic free programs that you can do very professional work without spending stupid tons of money. Now, there are some great programs, nonetheless, that are great for sound as you get more and more in depth. I'm just starting an audiobook business, and trust me, I am looking at some of those prettier, nicer programs for those audiobooks because I kind of want to, you know, make money doing it. That's just my, that's my thing. I'm willing to invest to make money. But if you are just getting started and you are at that point where you're just trying to, um, just get the ball rolling. Just try to just have some fun. Thirty, you can spend about thirty bucks. Heck, you can use your phone. I started with my phone. I did interviews on my phone for like the first year. Don't worry about your equipment until you decide you're serious. All right, then and only then think about it. So, what are your goals? Well, if your goal is to build an audience, if you're an author, so off. So, if you're an author trying to build an audiobook, okay. Keep in mind, okay, so this, this is the thing you got to consider. Sound's a very creative medium that honestly is by and large untapped. I have heard audiobooks that kind of sound robotic. They kind of read kind of funny. The, the narrator is kind of awkward, doesn't quite know what they're talking about. And you can hear that there's a, there's a lot more that can be done. Like I said, I love the old shadow shows. I love the old radio stuff. I think there's a real place in that in audio. And I experimented, especially if you read my, if you go in my early ones about the cloud diver, when I actually go in the cloud, there's me, I'm playing with sound effects just because I know that there's more to this than, um, there's more to this than meets the eye. And that's something that I, uh, I'm very conscious of. And you can do some really amazing things with the podcast. And I, I feel like they said there is definitely room for that, but you gotta make those decisions. As an audiobook, though, keep in mind your words aren't necessarily designed for the medium. And I, and what I mean by that is when you're talking about descriptions and things of that nature, audio is different. It's, it, it sounds, the sound is a little bit different than the actual written word. Written word create, it stimulates, is, a, is designed to make us all hallucinate and imagine cool things. The, the sound doesn't quite always hit the same mark. So I mean, some I actually believe that may, I, something I'm working with with my own audiobook is maybe even changing some of the words in the audiobook so it sounds better in there. It's just something I'm kind of I'm playing with and tapping into for myself personally. And if it blows up in my face, ignore me completely. But yeah, but but um, that all said, the thing about the audiobooks, it, they're great. It's a good um, tool for it. You can actually build an audience for your book. But same thing, come up with a formula, do it consistently. I, when I do my reading on my story time podcast, it's 10 to 15 minutes. And then I give an author another 20 to 30 minutes, right? So basically you hear me, but you're also, but you're also only hear me bit by bit by bit by bit. And you, you, you create that expectation. And then you let the, whoever the author is, and again, that was nature of what I did. For you, same thing, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Don't go, I feel 20 minutes is, is about the right thing for an audiobook show. Uh, you can go 30, I think, but I think that beyond that, it gets to be a stretch. That's just my opinion. Um, you guys do it. You guys figure it out yourself. Really what matters is find your formula, figure it out and just, you know, start practicing. Hold on, I'm going to look at questions here. Yes, it is easy to start on GarageBand on an iPad using your budget. It's totally a, hey, does it hey, go, go with whatever works. Um, it will, it will work for you. Like it really doesn't matter how you start. The important is how you start. Now let's go to video. So we are on zoom. Hi, we're all on zoom and I'm streaming this live on zoom, right? I'm using, I'm, this is literally a zoom cast. Is this the best program for this? No, it's not. However, it does have advantages. Zoom has an audience. So, I have currently, there are 30 plus individuals in this room and this 30 plus individuals, if I wanted to create a game show environment, which I've done with Susie Fedori, you can do that in Zoom. The fact that you have an audience in Zoom 
is very unique. You don't get that with StreamYard. You don't get that with some of the other programs that are out there. That's Zoom's big advantage. The disadvantage Zoom has is sound quality varies. It just varies um, depending upon um, just what's going on. Zoom is because of the demand, especially with during especially during this time with COVID. There are some times when I do a Zoom meeting, the volume will go up and then way down, then way up again and then way down. Zoom Zoom has a lot of high usage, but if you want an audience, if you want an audience, this is amazing, and that's one of the reasons why I'm streaming this with an audience. It's a cool visual. That's why I'm using Zoom. That's why I'm not using. So I'm gonna do something here real quick here. I'm sharing my screen, hooray. Going on my Facebook page here um, real quick. Okay. No, I don't wanna go on, my, uh, crappy. Don't wanna go, on my, you don't need to know what's on my Facebook. I'm just, I'm trying to, to do something real quick here. Uh, oh, okay. My screen sharing is paused there. I'm sorry guys, give me a quick second here. Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. We're back. We're where I want to be. All right, we're going back here. Show video. Why am I not on full screen? Besides the video, expect more participants. Okay, we're going to stop the share here. Well, actually, we don't have to stop the share here. We'll, we'll, we'll stop the share in a minute. This is StreamYard. Sorry, guys. I, I'm, 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 I, 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 this is my first time. Anyways, um, this is StreamYard. Now, StreamYard is great for a talk show. It actually has probably is the best streaming program you'll find here. You will see shows like Spilling Ink, Joe Compton's Go Wendy Now's use this tremendously. I'm going to stop the sharing right now. It is a great program. The only downside to StreamYard is you can only have four or five people on it. Right? So as a result, um, what happens with StreamYard is if you only have a small, if you have a small group of people, it's great. It's probably, it's stable. It doesn't crash. It syndicates everywhere beautifully. However, um, you can only have so many people. This one, it has its ups and downs, but you can have a ton of people on here, up to a hundred people. And so that you can create a, a different feel, a different, um, you're telling a different story in this program than you are say in StreamYard. Right, they each they each have their uses. Hold on a second here. Ah, we'll get we'll get to Twitch just a minute here. Actually we're gonna get to Twitch in just a second. So oh reads. Um Twitch is best if you can do if you but Twitch does require a little bit more work than I think it, than a podcast does or a YouTube show does. The, Twitch primarily was built for gamers, right? And because Twitch was pro, Twitch, there's a lot of streamers that stream video games. So there's a specific kind of form and function sometimes for, and Twitch was made for that. You can turn Twitch into some very creative shows. I think uh, someone I really think that should be using is Sandra Rickham. I think her show, her her fitness goals, doing a fitness program on Twitch would be huge for her. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for that with her. With a re re just a reading, uh, just a reading, it can be done. I, I think you can do some really cool things with music. You can do some really cool things with the background. You could do like a music video kind of thing. Um, there's a lot you could do with with it. I think I think the uh, issue with it more than anything else is. Um, I think you have to find a way to make a Twitch colorful. Same as a YouTube. You have to kind of find a different way to do it. If you're just coming out there and reading words, uh, Julie Heiner does a really cool thing with, with uh, Final Track. I mean, she, she paints herself up and actually gets into character and reads. And I, think that's a, I think that's definitely a step in the right direction you kind of need to go um, if you're going to use Twitch. But Twitch, if you're looking at it from a financial perspective um, and you're looking at video, Twitch is the way to go, not YouTube. YouTube, you use you you use YouTube as an advertising med, uh, venue for your Twitch. That's what you actually use YouTube for. You don't get the money on YouTube you once did. You still make a really good living on Twitch. Um, I'll be talking about this a little bit more tomorrow when I do have advertising in the apocalypse uh, on how to use YouTube specifically to, as an advertising tool to scale. Um, 
but the thing about um, the thing about Twitch and and YouTube is we'll get we'll get to that in a second. I'll finish my point and then we'll, we'll, we'll I'll open the floor to to questions. No, you wouldn't. There's not a reason why you would not upload all of them, but the formula for them is different. Twitch, you have this ability to go, let's say, an hour, right? I, I have found that the best results for streamers, right, people that use YouTube to advertise their streams, is like little clips, like five to ten minute clips of what they're doing. So let's say your reading is 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and it's on Twitch. That's awesome. That's the right environment to do it. It's the right formula. What, you'd be, what I would do with YouTube is I would create like a highlight video. Like this is like you come in, you say, hi, everybody, I'm Brandy. And today I read from my book, which is awesome. You can pick it up at this at this address. And this our topic is blah, 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 blah. And then you go in and then you show the reading for like five to ten minutes, maybe long enough for ad space on YouTube, because that's where the, there is money still in YouTube. And then you'd walk out the door. Um, I find if you're going to go video, if you're going to go video and you're going to go look at this from the point of view of trying to make a buck, that's how you do it. Um, speaking of making a buck, let's talk sponsors. So depending on your podcast, you can get sponsors. I have sponsors for my podcast. I have offered authors a sponsor for months, for a month at a time to pro, for books, giveaways. I've done that in the past. I have a regular sponsor right now in Indie Imprint, and I'm always, I'm always on the lookout for more sponsors. But I also go very brand conscious about my sponsors. So say your show is let's say a cooking show. So get the ingredients, wherever you buy your ingredients, that's a very logical sponsor for you. Where like, you know, maybe maybe a particular company that you like admire, like their flour, the bread, their things of that nature, that would, that would make, if you're a baking show, that would make a lot of sense if you're me. Books, video games, highlighting authors, um, you know, advertising my own, my own stuff. That makes sense for me as a brand. You will not see me advertise bodybuilding supplements on my podcast. And I say that because I just want people to understand like that's what you have to um, keep in mind too. You don't want to portray your brand. Whatever you decide to do, whatever you, whatever decision you make in regards to uh, what you do in terms of sponsorships, what you, what you do in terms of uh, getting the, getting your stuff done you cannot, under any circumstances, betray your brand. Because the moment you do that, be done. It's over. You're not going to. You're not going to um, keep your audience. And your audience, and your audience is your. Your audience is your bread and butter. Like when you are getting out looking for a sponsorship, you are. That's that's what you're doing. Um, to me, it's been a bit of both. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, it's been a bit of both. I have an audience. I don't have the, the biggest audience in the world, but I do have an audience. So people can look at my numbers. And so I broke a record. Um, I hit first time ever. I hit 400 plays downloads this week. I had a 200 download episode day. Uh, my audience was in the United States and Germany primarily. Canada, you suck. You guys got it. You got it. But no, I mean, it was all about you guys. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. But um, no, it was an incredible day uh, because it was just one of those things where it just it was a day, and then but I have 400. Now, if I get another week, and again last week I had 350. I had a hundred. I had my second ever hundred download day. So they're becoming much more common now. If I get to a point where my audience gets to a certain number. Sponsors will court me simply because I have an audience that they will want their stuff in front of. Again, I have to be very conscious about that. I have the trust of the audience. I can't just sell anything to them. But the the thing that, that you have, the thing you have to keep in mind with that is, um, right, is they will come to you when the when the numbers hit. Um, all right. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's totally. If I do it. Uh, I actually recommend newsletters as well. Uh, newsletters are a big. So, 
I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in detail tomorrow when we talk about advertising in the apocalypse, but bloggers, podcasters, and also, um, but also, um, anybody that can, that you can join forces with, um, try to get, try to get into people's mailing list because that's where, um, that's where a lot of your advertising success for a podcast, even your books, uh, that's huge. Mailing lists are one of the only two areas where an artist has full control over their financial future. If you deal with Amazon, you deal with YouTube, you deal with any of these other content providers, uh, you're playing by their rules. But your mailing list is one of the few spots where you play completely by yours. So if you can get people to come in and um, and do their do their thing, you can actually you're actually going to expand your presence that much more, and that's really huge. Shares, tweets, people promoting your promoting episodes, all that's huge. It adds up over time, and it really does. All right, we're gonna we're at the point. We are at the point. Um, there, everybody's asking questions, and really, I'm totally cool with that. So I'm gonna unmute everybody. Ha ha! You guys are allowed. You guys are allowed to talk. If you don't want to talk, that's totally fine. But I'm gonna take questions. If you want to talk, you want to actually make the uh, effort to put you, to put it out there. Um, go for it. I mean, I will let you let you guys speak. We got 20 minutes here to make this to make this matter. And I gotta go to my next panel. So ask away. I have a question about... on the microphone. Who's for, who said that first? Wolf Moon, I think. Wolf Moon. Hi. <laughs> so, you, so yeah, there's a low-end microphone to start with. When you want to become really professional, especially in doing audiobooks, what microphones do you recommend? What have you heard? Uh, I like, I use Olympus. I like, I like, well, the Olympus mics were really good. Um, the, the brand, I'm using a Sony mic right now. I mean... You still don't like. There is a, there is something to be said about the acoustics of your room. Like you, like you don't again. You don't necessarily need a three hundred dollar microphone. I have a Zoom mic for when I do interviews and stuff like that. That thing's amazing. Uh, that's probably that that microphone's about three hundred bucks. You don't need one quite that high. You can go like look look for something look for something that can that can um, look for something that's that that catches the full room. It's pretty late, late. and there's a bunch like Sony makes some, a few good mics. Uh, Zoom makes a fantastic mics. Um, I wish I had my Zoom mic here. I should have brought it. Um, but there are like I would I would suggest if, if I were if I were to make the suggestion to be a Zoom, that would be the company I would go with. They would make great audio equipment. Hey Josh. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying that. It's Kelly. How are you doing? Hey Kelly. What's up? Um, listen, along those lines, I actually have a Zoom. Yeah. Um, I use it for ethnographic interviews for my dissertation. Okay. And I'm wondering, um, because I record them lossless. Yeah. And uh, because I, I'm recording them for possible contribution to an archive. Um, do you record lossless or do you record as MP3 or what format I are you usually, recording? I in? usually record as a wave. Like, but a wave, because so primar it's lossless. But primarily, primarily because my computer's PC. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm recording based on the equipment I have. Um, if I were the best formats for, for recording are for, if you're doing PC, you want raw waves. Uh, they're usually the best MP, MP3 is condensed. If you're looking, most people won't notice MP3s, but it, but it, that are generally speaking, there is, there is def, there is a quality degradation there. No doubt. M4A is generally what, what, um, max tend to record in so what i would tell you is where's if your archive is going into like a digital cloud if it's gone on, P, on a pc use wait listless is fine use use a way but again if you want to build for particularly what pc you're using that would that would be what my advice to you would be um it also doesn't hurt to actually have to make two different files right the one with yeah. and one the one that you're most comfortable recording in. Really, I mean, at the end of the day, like again, way for way for um, PC, uh, M4A for um, Mac. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? I had a, I had a question, Josh. Okay. Hi, Danielle. Yeah. 
Okay, how you doing, Danielle? Good. Um, I know there's a bunch of different like directories and stuff. Like there's SoundCloud and Podomatic and Stitcher. Okay, and all sure. I, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the best one. I, I my 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 opinion. I'm not using the best one. I'm just caught because I've been there forever, and I I'm in a and that's it. And that's uh and they keep throwing free bandwidth at me. So I, it's kind of one of those situations where it's like I kind of don't want to stay, but. They're, they're giving me free stuff and it's a pain in the ass to move your RSS feed. So I'm, I'm on Podomatic. Um, I would say Podbean is probably the best one. It's one of my favorite. It's one of the ones I would recommend. SoundCloud's actually pretty good as well. Um, it does have, I prefer Podbean to SoundCloud, but SoundCloud definitely is not terrible. Um, Can you do both or do you uh, have to I, pick No, one? I would recommend, okay, so for syndication purposes, all that really matters is your RSS feed, right? So whatever your RSS feed is, that's what you're submitting to Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, right? right. So whether you choose SoundCloud or whether you choose Podbean really doesn't matter as much as your RSS feed and you putting it in places so that you can get syndication, right? That's how you actually spread your podcast wide is you take your RSS feed and you submit it to a whole bunch to the Google has their spot where they do it. Google's the, I, Google just changed. Um, I don't have to do it anymore, but I'm going to have to look, look the update for when I do, if I do have to move and that's, um, but everywhere else, please put in your RSS feed. Please tell us if you swear and please tell us that that's really all they care about. Most of them. That's all most of them care about. Gotcha. Right. But that's what you're worried. That's what you are doing here. Hold on a second here. I'm going to look at the chat real quick. <clears throat> All right. Mar Bye, Marilyn. Bye, everybody. All right. So Thank you. On that one, who's next? Who's that? Anyone else got a question here? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, so with the podcast that I'm uh, putting out right now, uh, I'm using Anchor as the platform. Uh, okay. Have you heard any thing good about the platform uh, i have heard not to be perfectly honest with you i've heard neither actually i i actually hold on, i'm lying it's in it's in most of the top 10 top 10 like recommended ones it's not bad i prefer podbeam i think podbeam's actually better there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with anchor there's nothing wrong with iHeartRadio. radio there's nothing there's nothing wrong with soundcloud right every it that's not as important as Again, your feed and how you syndicate. Of course, um, yeah. but doesn't that mean uh, require you to uh, pay a subscription in order to uh, get your podcast put out? No, no, um, not, not like your feed. Like I'm on Spotify, and I didn't have a membership to get into Spotify. I didn't have a membership to get into iTunes. I didn't have any of that stuff. All again, all they really care about is your feed. They care about your feed. They care about you being honest with your guidelines. So if you guys are swearing, they really don't care that you swear. They just want to know that you swear, right? All right. So basically, they want to know if it's safe for kids. Most of them have a, what is it, like a kids' guidelines. Just be honest about it. It doesn't make a difference for how quickly they let you in. Anything else? Um, I've. I'm, I'm hearing you talk a lot about streaming uh, as part of this uh, particular panel. Uh, I'm someone who's not particularly comfortable with the idea of streaming. I don't really like the idea of uh, people. You, you don't need to. You don't? No, no, no. no. The, the reason I'm bringing this up is this year. This year being such a, like we're, we're using Zoom, we're using, we're using a lot more video conferencing technology t today as a result of just the nature of how the world is going. I figure I just show you guys a little glimpse of some of the programs where you can maximize it. So I thought this year, I wouldn't normally be quite so stream heavy, but because of the nature of how this year has worked out, I might as well just show you, you can stream with this. You can do these things with these programs if you want to, but you can totally, totally as an audio, there's a huge demand for audio. So don't worry about it. So you're not going to be shooting yourself in the foot. No, God, no. Okay. Any us? I got a question. Sure. Um, 
Um, what's your experience or have you uh, um, had any experiences with dealing with any of the commercial podcast publishers like Podcast One? And what's your advice in sort of like um, whether someone approaches you or what, or when you approach them? So, okay, so that's, that's a, I have, I've had friends approached by it. I haven't, I've, I've talked to some people who have, there's a lot of money in it, in, in, in those networks and syndications. So what you have to, what you have to look at there is twofold. One, you have an audience. If they're, if they're approaching you, you have an audience. The question you have to ask yourself is what are they giving you that you're not getting yourself? In my case in particular, I can get sponsors. I can get, right, and again, is this gonna give me a different audience that I wouldn't have had access to otherwise? That's a different, that's the question I would be looking at. I'd be looking at their demographics. I'd be looking at how they match up to mine. I also really, in, in podcast one's case in particular, I really hate how they do their commercials. I think they're terrible and I don't wanna be that hokey ever you got to pay me listen i i admit i am a little bit of uh how do i put this i'm a little bit of a i'm a freelancer ergo i'm a little bit of a whore i can be bought but you but if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna do it if you if i'm going to do it um it's definitely gonna be worth my time because i really think in particular podcast one's hokey as fuck it's being honest <laughs> anyone else um, so I'm looking at uh, Podbean's uh, pricing plans right now, uh, and it mentions that uh, if you want to go with the basic plan, that it's free, uh, but you only get five hours total of storage space. So, um, so Nathan, I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. Just on, okay. just an honest honest thing. What do you want to do with the podcast? Like, what are your goals with the podcast? If your goal is just to have fun, right? I archive a lot of my stuff on my YouTube channel. Like literally there are 339 episodes on my YouTube. I don't like, they keep throwing bandwidth at me at this point. I'm not like, I've been trying to figure out how to leave, but they keep trapping me with bandwidth. So, um, right. They won't let me walk away easily. It's like, it's hard. It's, it's, so that's my position. You're, you're, you're getting started. And I would just tell you like, give it, give it 10 to 20 episodes. Give it 10 to 20 episodes. If after 10 or 20 episodes, you're like, let's, okay, I'm serious about this. Okay, th then then think about plans. Think about what you want to do. Look at your audience. Think about how you want to grow it. Like that's when you really want to actually maybe really, really take a sit back and go, okay, I, what do I want to do? But if you're just getting started, man, just like, make sure you want to do this, right? Give yourself 10 to 20 episodes. Cause the last thing you want to do is drop like a hundred and some odd dollars or whatever the case may be right now and go, Hey, I have renewed my membership and I'm stuck here for a year. And I did five episodes that that's not, that that's not a good deal. It never is a good deal. I'm actually, uh, Laura Lee is actually correct. You can't beat YouTube for startup at all. Like YouTube is not YouTube's free and that's not a, that's not a hard, um, that's not hard to do. Um, I actually, I'm putting out my 18th episode on Tuesday. Okay. So, so then the question I'm going to ask, and then I'm, I'm going to move on to somebody, somebody else is this, and you need to answer this one yourself, honestly. What do you want to accomplish with the podcast? And that, and then privately, if you want to talk to me about it, I will happily hear you out. Um, right. But just be honest about that. And we'll, you know, we'll go from there. Okay, All right. Yeah. Um, anyone else? Okay. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for coming. I appreciated your effort and time. So before I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my shameless, my sh my shameless plug there for, for in a second here. So if so we're going to do this like this, if you want to, if you want to support me in any way, shape or form, there's my newsletter. There's my two books. Not sure if it's just me though. Right. Um, there's my books. 
my podcast is right here. Is right here. Oh, geez. Not privately. Ah, don't want to do this privately. Do not private, you silly thing. Everyone in meeting. Got to do that again. Dang it. All right. Real quick, and then I'm out, and I'll let you guys go to what's next. I got to get ready, too. And that is... That's my podcast. That's my newsletter. Those are my my recent books. If you want to support me, that'd be great. If not, I hope you guys um, got something out of this. I appreciate um, everybody coming out, out here. I got another panel to get ready for, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end this with a style here. All right. Thank you. That's done. And.